In tonight's episode of Real Twisted Tales. On tonight's episode of Real Twisted Tales, I'm going to tell you the story of the star-crossed lovers, Lucas Markham and Kim Edwards. But before I do, I must warn you that this tale isn't for the faint-hearted. When I first heard of this story, I wondered how two teenagers madly in love could become the youngest double murderers in British history. Kim Edwards and Lucas Markham met at school in a small town in Lincolnshire called Spalding. Both came from really difficult homes and both felt unworthy in their lives. And although they knew each other for several years, it is said that Kim didn't really pay attention to Lucas until she saw him pick up and throw a chair in a classroom in one of his many violent outbursts at school. Lucas was put into isolation for his actions and Kim started to hang around at break time and lunchtime trying to get to know the bad boy who had stolen her heart. The couple began to date and it all seemed innocent enough. However, underneath it all, dark plans were beginning to hatch. As the pair's intense relationship grew, Kim's mother, Liz, had deep concerns and Kim was forbidden from seeing Markham, thinking that their relationship would end. It didn't. And the star-crossed lovers ran away, <laughs> sleeping in a tent for five days and living off of junk food until the police found them and dragged them home. And once home, Liz condemned the relationship even more. With Kim unable to see Lucas except for at school, the hatred towards Kim's mother grew until one day, as the couple ate lunch, Lucas said something that would begin the chain reaction that would lead to murder. Surrounded by other students, Lucas whispered to Kim that he wished he could kill her mother. Weeks passed, the couple sneaking time together in school and out of school, and what Lucas had said to Kim had stuck with her. If Kim's mother was out of the picture, they could be together, them against the world. They were just like the star-crossed lovers in Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Kim's parent was trying to keep them apart, but their love, their infatuation wouldn't allow it. And as more time passed, their plan grew and grew into something concrete that would lead to Kim's mother's murder. In police interviews after the lovers had been discovered, Lucas said that he wanted to kill them. But Kim thought he was joking until, and I quote, she realized I was being serious and then she became serious. And I don't know about you, but I find it terrifying that these conversations were happening on a school playground. But there is a huge leap from thinking and even planning to actually doing. And as you'll discover, even though it was planned, one of our star-crossed lovers was having second thoughts. On the night of the 12th of April, 2016, Mark unpacked four deadly kitchen knives, two for him and two for her, into a rucksack. He then walked under the blanket of darkness to Kim's house. Living on the same estate, the walk should have only taken a few minutes. However, not wanting to get seen, Markham walked along the canal behind their estate. It took him 30 minutes to walk there in the darkness. And with each step, each second, his conviction to commit murder grew. With Liz gone, they could be together. With Liz gone, he could have Kim all to himself. Markham climbed a fence and up some scaffolding to reach Kim's window. And I find it a little spooky that he had to climb some scaffolding. It's like it was a more sinister version of the balcony scene from Romeo and Juliet. In that, Romeo climbed the balcony for love, but Markham was climbing for murder. Markham tapped three times on her bedroom window. Tap, 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 just as they had planned. And 
then he waited. Thoughts of how he would kill Kim's mother playing on his mind. But Kim didn't come to the window. And cupping his hands to look inside, he could see that she was asleep. But was she really? I mean, we can only speculate, but maybe Kim was awake. Maybe she was having second thoughts. Maybe she heard him knock. Maybe she saw his shadow and then realised if she opened that window, her mother would be murdered. Trudging home the same way he came, Markham was consumed by his rage and adrenaline for almost committing the most heinous of crimes. And once back home, he took the knives out of his rucksack. He held them in his hand. He felt the weight of them. He felt the cold of the metal pressed against his skin. And he fantasised about that knife being covered in the blood of Kim's mother. And this is where the story gets truly awful. I said at the beginning that this was a double murder. And so far, I've only spoken of Kim's mother, Liz. I haven't made a mistake. Because for the couple to get away with it, for the couple to truly be together, the lovers had decided that Kim's younger sister also had to die. Four knives, two murders, two victims. The couple had planned to use a knife each on Kim's mother and her younger sister, both of them committing the murder of Kim's entire family. On the second night, Mark unpacked his bag. He again made the long and quiet walk to Kim's house. He again climbed the scaffolding, again tapped three times on the window, and again, Kim was asleep. On a third night, however, Kim opened her bedroom window. Markham climbed into the bedroom. He kissed Kim. And staying in the bedroom, the same room where Kim's sister slept, they removed the knives from the rucksack. And then they made their way to Kim's mother's bedroom where she slept. But Kim couldn't do it. She couldn't complete the act that they had fantasised about. She couldn't go into her mother's bedroom. And so Markham stepped forward. Walking in, he tiptoed to Liz's bed, climbed onto it, held the knife high above his head, and before she woke, he stabbed her. And as a side note, to show how detailed and horrifying their plan was, he stabbed her in the neck because they'd planned it that way so she couldn't scream. How messed up is that? Markham stabbed Kim's mother eight times in all and then held a pillow over her face for several minutes until her life had been snuffed out. Then climbing from her dead body, covered in her blood, the pair embraced before they moved back into Kim's bedroom and her sleeping 13-year-old sister. And this bit's really hard to tell, so I'll be brief. Markham then killed Kim's 13-year-old sister, Katie, in the same way he had killed Kim's mother. And when questioned by the police, Kim said that Katie had to die because she didn't want her to suffer in her life because of what she had done. With her mother and her sister now dead, the couple showered, ate ice cream, watched a Twilight movie, and then had sex. Two days later, the police banged on their door and entered the house. And when asked what happened, Markham simply said, go upstairs and see for yourself. Kim Edwards and Lucas Markham believed in their love enough to commit one of the most horrific killings of recent times. They believed in doing so that they would be together forever. But the reality is what they have done will keep them apart for many years to come. Both Lucas Markham and Kim Edwards were arrested on the spot, charged and then later convicted for double murder. They both got 17 years. 
which means these two deadly people will be back out in the community at ages 32 and 33, younger than I am today. And I don't know about you, but I find that truly terrifying. And I have to wonder, will their love continue with this separation? Or will it die like the murders which stain their hands? Thanks for watching our video on the Starcross Lovers. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to hit that like button and perhaps leave a comment. We would love to know your thoughts. Good night and keep safe. Coming up in the next episode of Real Twisted Tales. We'll be looking at the case of Catherine Knight, who in the year 2000 murdered, skinned and then boiled her own partner.